This beauty is the Delange 2LCV. The Delange Company's 1923 entry to the French Grand Prix. The 2LCV was an evolution of the 2LC, a car developed by Delange for the Strasbourg race that year, woefully underpowered with its four-cylinder engine against the Fiats, Bugattis, and Sunbeams. Delange designer Charles Planchon was tasked with just 120 days to develop a new engine, and he chose wisely. This car was installed with a V12 engine just in time for the 1923 French Grand Prix. With 1914 Indianapolis 500 winner René Thomas at the wheel, the Delange looked set for victory, taking the pole and leading the first eight laps of the Grand Prix. But eventually, overheating issues caused by dust and debris on the circuit required René to fall back and retire from the race. Despite the speed and performance before the retirement, Delange fired Charles Planchon and instead hired his cousin Albert Lory to continue development on the 2LCV. Planchon's V12 through continued development was quite successful, winning most notably the 1925 French and San Sebastian Grand Prix. The car as we see it here is its unique 1923 configuration, the only year it raced with the older chassis and the V12 engine. This car was painstakingly developed by Liam, aka Nice Cup of Tea, to round out his 1923 French Grand Prix. This is the fifth out of six cars that competed in the race, and in my opinion, it's the most beautiful of them all. The 2.0-liter V12 engine output 110 horsepower, only outdone by the Fiat 805's 135 horsepower supercharged in line 8. Both the Fiat and the Delange suffered mechanical issues during the 1923 French Grand Prix, but they are really a great match for each other. The Fiat absolutely has it down the straights, but the Delange corners so well and mix the Sunbeam in with that, and you have a really diverse and great racing series. I can't thank Liam enough for making these cars. Before the 1923 Grand Prix cars started coming out, I didn't know much about this era at all, and definitely not the specific cars, but learning the specifics or idiosyncrasies of each of the cars has been extremely fun, and I think for sure this group of cars, once he finishes, is going to go down as one of the great collections in sim racing history. So, the Delange 2 LCV, a beautiful race car with an engine far before its time. And luckily, we have a great place to try out this car. This is the Opel Rennbahn. The Opel Rennbahn was an oval circuit near Frankfurt, Germany in Rüsselheim, built in the waning days of the First World War. Just under a mile at 1.5 kilometers long, the track was a test track for the Opel Car and Bicycle Company. Despite being intended as a test track, the Rennbahn held many races throughout the 1920s and was the proving ground of some great German drivers such as Hermann Lang. But coming to the end of the 1920s, motor racing's popularity had birthed circuits such as the Nürburgring, Avis, and the Hockenheim Ring. The Opel Rennbahn was not needed anymore for Grand Prix racing, and so it fell back to its traditional role as a test circuit. After the war, racing never took place on the circuit again, and in the 1960s, German law saw that trees were planted in various places around the track so that nature could reclaim its place. Today, only a tiny sliver of the banking and a viewing platform exist, with some notes about the past and the great circuit that was here. So remarkably, in the same day that the Delange has come out for a set of course, so this circuit was also released in a quote, pre-alpha state. This track was put together by THL, or Thomas LeCal, who's done some incredible work over the years for Grand Prix Legends, as well as Assetto Corsa. He's really a master of texturing. And he's humbly called this circuit a pre-alpha, but I'm really not lying when I say this is one of the best looking circuits, especially for the 1920s that I've seen for any sim. There's not a lot of content out there that fits the 1920s specifically. There's some 30s stuff, but most of the older tracks are from the 50s and 60s. So it's great to get a circuit from this time period, and I really hope that more of them come. Some might be turned off with the fact that it's an oval, but I guarantee you this is unlike any oval you've ever raced. You don't have a wall around the outside, just a small curbing. Uh, the banking is very narrow, so it makes it almost one and a half grooves or so, kind of like a Darlington or something like that. And the, the shape of it is not perfectly round. It 
does have some straightaways on the front and back uh, and the corners themselves are quite different. So there's a lot to discover here and racing these 1920s cars around the circuit is is very, very awesome. I really don't have a lot of words for it. It's one of the most fun things I've done in a very long time in sim racing. So one of the main features missing in this pre-alpha version of the circuit are the racing and AI lines, but I hope Thomas doesn't mind. I've gone ahead and developed my own AI lines because racing around this track in these cars is very, very awesome. So I want to take the Delange out and do a race around this circuit, 25 laps starting from the back against a handful of the other cars from this Grand Prix and see what passing and racing around a track like this in the 1920s might have been like. All right, so sitting here at the back of the very eclectic grid here at the Ren Bond, but 25 laps around the circuit, lights are lit. Out, we're underway. It'll be a slow getaway, of course, but now we'll work. Let's see if I can get uh, on the throttle there, let out the clutch. We'll work towards the first corner. Almost around circuit, but there are some straightaways trying to get around this white Delange to the outside. Got one of the Voissants in front. Lower horsepower. I think the Voisson only has something like 85 horsepower, so I want to get around him quickly. <laughs> so sketchy on the high side, but it's one of the only places to do it here. Work down the back straightaway then in fourth gear, where we'll remain for the rest of this thing. Behind one of the sunbeams now. Ooh, two cars in front, getting a little sideways. Got the AI to behave all right around here. Let's see if I can come around the outside. Onto the front straightaway. Best passing opportunity here. Come across the line up to P9. I think I got about 16 cars. Oh, sunbeam coming around down low. All right. He wants to race. It's just waiting for a second for everybody to get strung out, but. Now with that, we'll see if I can come around the inside. This is real 1920s racing. Having an actual track oh, from the time period, this isn't gonna work on the low side. Having an actual track from the time period is awesome. Makes it feel like you're really, really doing it and it's so scary. There's just a lot of ways that this can go wrong. Hopefully everybody will stay on the track for this full race. Coming to the first corner. 23 laps. Hopefully, can get to the front. We've done a couple races here with the AI. It's been a ton of fun so far. Oh, we're gonna get squeezed right to the outside. Let's see if I can come around the sunbeam here. Got the Fiat in front, which should be the should be the fastest car. But again, there's some turning here, so it's not quite as easy as just pedal to the metal. Right up against the outside, though. Let's see if I can stick in the throttle. Here we go. And these two in front have been battling with each other, so it's quite slow. The sunbeam into the first corner. The first corner there has got the sharpest part of the track and I absolutely love how not perfect this oval is. Luckily, the outline of the track still somewhat exists from a satellite view of the area so you can trace it and I think that's what Thomas has done here to create a very believable circuit. Oh, the two in front, side by side, locking wheels at Poisson. Just get the fat wheels in the front. Gotta get around these two before bad things happen. go though coming into the first corner oh the sunbeam tags the back of the Poisson see if I can get around him then now of course it feels a little odd doing the left turns around the circuit because you're sat on the outside I'll see if I can swing under the Poisson here the Delange much better on acceleration with the V12 pounding away but it feels weird because you're on the outside, of course. Optimally, you'd want to sit on the inside. I don't know if these specific cars ever raced around this track, and they would have had two drivers, a driver and a, a co-pilot in the cars anyway, so the weight would have been more evenly distributed if these cars did really race around this circuit. But it does, it does feel a little odd, odd around the outside. It makes it a lot of fun to ride the top. You can get very close to the outside. Got a little bit of a gap here though, see if I can get a couple good laps in and catch up to this Bugatti in front. A little bit of over.
driver's steer there. You can control it quite a lot. Again, I mentioned this in other videos about these cars, but it's the perfect marriage of horsepower to the tires. It's not at all like driving the 1930s cars, which are frustrating because they essentially have the same tires and brakes, uh, but triple the horsepower. So these cars are a little more balanced, uh, but that doesn't mean they're slow or easy. Not, uh, you know, they're, they're still pretty hard cars to drive, uh, to drive fast but quite a lot of fun. Ooh, a little bit of wheel spin there. You can hear the RPMs rise. Definitely can get the cars two sideways quite easily. All right, so I'm in P6. I see three cars directly in front of me. The Bugatti is such a weird shaped car. Imagine it would be quite good in a straight section though. Let's see if I can maybe get the low side of him down the back straight away. Oh, not gonna quite be able to get there in time. He squeezes me down. Ooh, right up to the top. I feel like I'm towering over him in this thing. Come across the line here, 17 laps to go. So quite a bit of time to do it, but no clue where the leaders have gone. So maybe if I can come around the outside, just get a good run off the corner. He blocks me there too. Trying to stick it down low, it's not gonna work. Try not to understeer into him. Got a lot of wheel spin there. You can hear the RPMs once again rising up. All right, we'll have to try it differently. Try to get a run on him in some different place. Come into the first corner. So you can see how it's a little sharper there, so it's quite fun to throw the car in. Come around the outside. Whoa! Gonna get squeezed right to the top there. Almost touched wheels. All right, there we go, around the outside, that's the place to do it. Take the line away from him. Over the bumps, car jostles all over the place. You just have to let the wheel dance in your hands. Come down the low side, down the front straightaway. Sunbeam trying to block me a little bit. <laughs> Gonna slide up, oh, almost hitting his wheel there. on the throttle is pulling out a little bit on me now so you're pretty much flat throttle in these I know I got nothing on the screen really to show you what I'm doing but pretty much flat throttle lifting it a bit coming into the corners and then as the car slides sideways a bit you do got to dip out of the throttle or else you'll you'll spin out so you can come to the outside here right against the fans pretty much nothing protecting them throw it into the corner I think I got past the sunbeam then so up to P5 with 14 laps to go. I think I got the other Delange in front of me here. Painted dark blue. This car, uh, the one I'm driving, the Delange, has been restored somewhat. Uh, there's a later version of it. I think this car was actually sold after the 1923 French Grand Prix uh, to an owner that put a different engine in it. And that car still exists to this day. And it looks much more like the car in front of me, a darker shade of blue. Still a cool car, but the V12 itself, very, very interesting engine to read about. One of the early attempts at that. All right, trying to get a good run on him though. The torpedo rear end there, so cool looking. Oh, gonna get squeezed to the bottom side. Have to do the same thing I did to the Bugatti here. He blocks the high side too. Try to get a good run coming out of the fourth corner. Oh, I don't know if I want to throw it up there. Just trying to get a nice run coming to the back straightaway maybe. Right up against the high side. There's nothing stopping you from going over the curbing there, so very easy to do. <laughs> I'm sure some of you that try to race around here, oh, squeezing me. I'm sure some of you will do the same thing I did about 10 times before I got it, jumping over the edge. Come to the line, this is good racing. Ugh. Not gonna be able to throw it on the inside, of course, there's no banking here, so I'm gonna slide back onto the outside. Gotta look out for behind me too. You would definitely be swiveling, swiveling your head all around. It'd be easier to have a co-driver to tap on your shoulder when somebody's coming up from behind. It's fun, it's almost like short track racing, 
Uh, the track's, you know, about a mile, so it's a little bigger than what you'd call a short track, but so cool in these cars. Big bump there under the Opal Bridge. We're just leaving the outside open a bit here. Oh, he's gonna slide up into me. Don't push me off. You can hear the engine rattling away to my left there, oh, right against the edge. You can actually hit the curbing a little bit, something you absolutely wouldn't want to do in real life, but here it actually helps keep you in the track slightly. All right, there we go. So clear of the other Delange. I can see two more cars in front. I have to think they're the leaders. So we'll come across the line, take a look at the interval. We've got nine laps to go, five seconds to the car in front. Should try to slide the car through, take the best line. The best line is not right against that seam to the low side. It's about a car width up. The banking really curves up. It's almost got progressive banking, honestly. And coming into the corner, you can throw it in quite fast and then use the extra camber on the outside, extra banking to help get the car to turn to the line this time. Oh, it took 1.2 seconds out, so I'm quick. Eight laps to go. Should be able to get up there, I imagine. Pass over the lettering on the circuit. I think that's so cool. It's something that tracks seem to have done in the old days quite a lot, but you don't see even in the 1950s or 60s. They didn't paint the track anymore. Slide it into the third corner. Slowly catching that Bugatti in front. Also going to catch some lap traffic, so things might get a little dicey here towards the end. You slowly move the wheel between sliding and catching the slide when it goes a little too far. Absolute punishment for that right rear tire, but it does last the 25 laps. I don't know how many laps it would have done around here in real life, but definitely would have been a tire test for the time. Much more banking than something like an Indian Indianapolis. And it was said that this track uh, that was inspired by Indianapolis, Indianapolis of course being built just about eight years before this one was. So took some notes from the track. Of course it goes in the same direction to the left. Uh, so pretty cool track inspired by that. But oh, if you guys are gonna jump down low, maybe. Looks like these guys might be held up a little bit by the lap traffic, so things will get a little interesting here. We got two of the Fiats and a Voisson, as well as the Sunbeam and Bugatti right in front of me. But here we go, pulling in now. So just five laps to go, P3. I should take my time negotiating this, just 0.4 behind, so I think it's definitely the Bugatti right in front of me. superior horsepower here to try to draft maybe get around the outside my favorite move <laughs> it's still scary though oh maybe take both of them there we go oh but nowhere to go really leaves the high end open high side open thankfully all right come across the line p1 now just gotta work through this lap traffic the fans would be cheering of course this would be incredible to see i'll show some shots from outside the track after the race and watching this must have been quite incredible these cars feel like you're going quite fast when you're racing them Let's see if i can get around the vosant here oh no he's gonna squeeze me Ooh, life flashed before my eyes there all right fade down low Let's see if i can keep it around the outside but yeah it's impressive the the cars feel like you're going quite fast driving them and often you'll find uh, when racing these cars at other circuits, viewing it from the outside, maybe it doesn't look so quick. But around this track, everything looks quick. It's a small, it's a small track. It's under a mile, high banked. Uh, we're probably going over 100 kilometers an hour easily, 150 maybe. So it's not a slow track at all. It'd be very scary, especially considering the safety that's on the circuit here. Uh, we can see no wall to the outside and all those spectators. So two laps to go. Got a whole chain, train of cars in front of me. Hopefully, probably just catch them coming to the, <laughs> the checkered flag here, the white flag in a lap. Oh, a little bit of oversteer there. Keep 
it up nice and high and then jump it down to the inside line. You definitely don't want to go in the flat step to the very inside. That would just be for if you break something. Whoa, slide in the car there a little bit. So we'll come to the line, get the white flag. One more lap to go. We've got a whole train of cars in front of me. Come around this other Delage. Back to our Belgian friend we started with. So done a full lap on the end of the field here. Let's see who'll give me the outside. I don't know if the AI and the set of course I know much about being a lapped car. But alright. Come around behind this Fiat. But we'll come to the line to win this little race here. A lot of fun racing the Delange. I'm just floored by all of this. Thomas said he's been getting some negative reviews for the circuit, and I absolutely do not know what people are talking about. I mean, the track without AI, uh, it's still fun to lap, and I'll include my AI in the description of the video for anybody that wants to use them. I think, I'll go on record, Thomas, this track is awesome. Uh, I can't wait to see you, I guess, do more to it, although I don't know what else you would do to it. Uh, it's a ton of fun, and thank you so much for making something like this. From this time period, it's great to finally have a 19 20 circuit to do some racing on so these videos kind of make themselves when i see two things come out in the same day a beautiful car as the delange and this track by thomas uh, you really can't do anything wrong racing these cars around here so i hope everybody enjoyed this i can't wait to see the last car come out apparently nice cup of tea liam's working on the roland which is the last car of the whole set and I haven't seen anything about the actual track from the 1923 Grand Prix coming out, but would be cool if it did someday. Even if not, there's some great tracks now to race these things on uh, between Fat Alfie's stuff, uh, this track by Thomas, and everything else coming out. This is a really great sim. I'm, I'm very much enjoying this, and I hope you are as well. So thank you for watching. I'll leave you with some sights and sounds of the cars racing around the oval, because if the inside was interesting to you, I bet the outside views will be as well. So thanks for watching. And I'll see you all again next time.